I'm all three of them. I, uh, I, I can't do one without the other. It's, um, I paint what I can't talk about and I can't explain in words. Um, my uh, other ideas that are better expressed by other people, I let them talk. Uh, as a talk show host, I invite them to come and, and speak uh, when they're a little bit more clear. I uh, celebrate um, other people. I uh, enjoy the idea of having a vibrant world around me. Um, the art world, the gallery offers me that. A lot of free thinking, uh, abstract thinking. Uh, um, it's, I grew up without being able to to say who I was be, without being able to express who I am out of fear, um, fear of getting hurt. Uh, I was uh, 13, 14 when I came out. So I had to keep quiet about a lot of things. Uh, and the only way that I found that I was able to express myself was through my work. Um, and I have found other people that also are either poets, writers, movers and shakers, uh, that I'd love to give that opportunity uh, that was given to me uh, to speak. So I, I, I give them the exhibitions, I give them the platform, the venue, uh, and the things that are still missing, I end up having to play politics and still be a, a genuine activist and advocate. Uh, my, my experience and my role in the activist world is more advocacy uh, than anything else. Uh, it's when the advocacy uh, doesn't work and there's too many of us that, that are focused on a specific thing that needs to be changed whether we want to be treated the same as other people, we want the same access as other people. Um, in my case, we wanted the same um, right to live and the right to health care. And that's where it came from, from the AIDS uh, pandemic, that we, weren't, uh, we were getting redlined. That meant that we weren't getting the insurance payments because of our zip codes, because we lived in predominantly gay um, zip codes in gay neighborhoods. Uh, and the insurance company started cutting the payments or be uh, not approving the, the claims. And we got tired of advocating to our congressmen, to our mayors, to our hospitals. Um, so then the next step has to come and it is activism and that includes the marches, the protests, the signs um, and if that doesn't work um, we progress into civil disobedience. Um, we were not asking for anything that other people were not getting at the same time. Uh, even so much as right now um, when we ask for people to be stewards of the environment, we advocate for climate remediation, uh, we, we petition people, we, we make slogans, we march, we protest um, to save our trees, to save our waters. Um, and in such cases, some people have taken to civil disobedience also to make sure that the, those issues come to light. Um, and it's a natural American way of uh, going about change when you don't have lobby groups, uh, when you don't have a lot of money, um, and 
the changes are affecting only a very small minority group in the country, whether it's gay, whether it's uh, black, whether it's Hispanic, um, whether it's poor, whether they're farmers, whether they're minors. Um, and I think that that's, um, everybody looks inside and they, um, they approach things first very civilly and then they look for, for ways to get it done and when too many doors shut, um, they protest. I ended up as a delegate because I'm growing old and I have to work within the system. Um, how I said, I, I've been a, a big advocate, uh, activist, and participant. I'm a real believer in civil disobedience, um, boots on the ground kind of person, and uh, I am not going to run for office. Um, that's not where my interest lies. Uh, it is making change. And one of the things that I have been doing, um, now that I'm all grown up, and I started growing up last year at 57, I think it's um, to work within the system. Uh, there are things that can be accomplished amicably. Uh, one of the things is to assure ourselves of the change in the dynamic of the current politics and to make sure that basically that we elect a president that is a leader, that puts us on a, on a level of respect internationally that we have been on in the past. Uh, and that means to support Biden. Um, and I was very much involved representing the Hispanic community. Uh, as a Democrat for Hispanic uh, rights to get the attention of uh, Hispanic issues locally. And I became a member of the, of the chapter. I became vice president of the chapter. I am currently the president of the chapter. And I went to the state convention and I was like, I am going to make sure that at least one vote um, is provided. And I get to go to Milwaukee this year and stand for the constituency that wants me to vote for Biden and, and stand for them. Hispanics will be deciding the 2020 elections, uh, the presidential elections, uh, more so than down ballot, I think. The, the uptick in, um, in pressures against the Hispanic community have been so grave in the last four years under Trump. The, while many of the, of the conservative uh, Hispanics that vote may tend to uh, stay with Trump only because of their economic standings. I think that the downturn in the economy will influence their vote also. Uh, but the rest of the Hispanic community throughout the country uh, has ties with the immigrant community and has strong ties with the immigrant community. Um, and they have um, been left with um, a lot of pain. And I think that a lot of the people that would have otherwise not voted have seen the consequence of not voting, uh, that could vote. So I think we will see a lot more uh, participation from the Hispanic community. It's been one of the hardest damaged communities in the last four years. And I, um, I think there that you could expect a lot more participation by the the work that I've done uh, trying to speak and reach out to the community. Um, many of them said, I never thought it was important until uh, I see the condition in which we find ourselves in. Uh, and many of them are not working 
and economically they're being trampled on now, which is uh, not a good thing for Trump because there, uh, many people are unemployed also. So the separation of children, the slandering of people, and now uh, not sticking up for the, for the unemployed. Um, many of the unemployed will rely on jobs that are going to be given to private prisons um, because of contracts that he has uh, and the support that he has. So even the, the most menial jobs uh, will go to support uh, his interests within the private prison system, uh, which is what the whole immigration thing was about. It was to uplift the private prisons uh, and give them the commodity that, that the private prisons use, which is prisoners. That question is like uh, so up in the air now. Uh, I know that Trump was uh, counting on a booming economy that affected everybody, not just uh, Latinos, not just uh, the African American community. Uh, he was hoping that his base would be thriving in this economy. Um, and there's a very uh, small sector that is actually thriving in this economy. Even if um, they open the economy these days uh, and people start bouncing back, the fear of the instability of a second wave uh, of the COVID pandemic is going to have a very big impact on how he's perceived. Um, and his, they, they, they will hold him uh, responsible for the downturn of the economy. Um, people realize that opening up the economy too fast is heading, is basically heading towards a crash. It's a band-aid with the expectations of being able to congregate and for right now it's a lot of fun to hold flotillas and uh, to have rallies again, but the science is there, the are not numbers are there, there is no vaccine, so I would hope not, but if a second wave and a second quarantine is coming, it will be coming in, in late October, early November, and that will affect the elections uh, for him, uh, it will be devastating. All undocumented, um, that is, um, that's kind of like a Republican talking point. Um, I don't think that, um, being human and caring for anyone in this country who's working for you um, and who's a legal resident, whether they are a legal resident uh, but not a citizen, uh, should be denied medicine. Um, we have a lot of resident uh, aliens in this country. Uh, we have a lot of documented uh, people. We have a lot of people in the process that are undocumented. Um, by all means, we're not going to perpetuate the conditions that are currently in place, um, where people are not being given the adequate medical attention while they're being in detention centers. Because they're undocumented, and funding has been shut down and, or closed or limited in certain areas and so, uh, to these populations. Uh, once they're in, in our country and they're in our care, whether they're in, in process of getting their documents, whether they're in, in detention, uh, temporary detention, um, they should be afforded the dignity of health care um, if they become sick. And I think that we have become so polarized on that conversation that we forget that, that these are human beings and we cannot um, allow 
little girls to like what made the news that um, a lot of little girls weren't even uh, given the, the necessary sanitary equipment as they became uh, menstrual while they were incarcerated because many of the young ladies um, matured while incarceration um, and they weren't given medical attention that they needed nor the education um, because their parents had been separated and that was the current concept of not allowing any medical attention to undocumented kids and I think that that will change and I think that needs to change and I think we need to go back to a little bit more of a humanitarian approach to healthcare. Uh, whether the people are documented or not, and I think that that is something that is not going to be an easy fix, um, but definitely it cannot stay polarized. If Trump is reelected again, which uh, um, I don't believe he will, um, and let alone um, with any support from the LGBT community except for a handful, a very small minority of, uh, of uh, LGBT that belong to a sect uh, called Log Cabin Republicans, but the, the broader political uh, LGBT community um, is seeing, uh, is reliving a lot of the horrors that, that we went through in the 80s um, when people were discriminated against and left to die without any um, care. The slandering and the allowance of, um, and the permission that's been uh, given to our trans community is very important to everyone. Uh, only in South Florida there have been a number of uh, murders that have come out um, and still um, we bring their name up and we hurt because they've passed. And the gay community tends never to forget. Um, every word that this president has uttered, how he's downplayed it, the reversals of a lot of our protections that were purposely done for absolutely no reason than because the president was playing games um, to undo anything and everything that Obama tried to do. Um, that petty fight has affected many of the lives of, of our community. Um, and I don't think that we'll, we'll support someone who doesn't have any regard for the fallout of his bickering uh, and bandstanding on political issues with uh, whether it be Obama, whether it be Elizabeth Warren. Uh, to make a point, he will allow people to die and get hurt. Uh, we've seen that at the rallies. Um, while he's pandering to his base, people get hurt, people get killed, and laws have been changed to allow to perpetuate um, bias, racism, separatism, um, and hate crimes. And I, I don't think that we forget when we go to the polls. Uh, that motivates us more to go vote. Everything is at stake in 2020. Everything that has changed will continue to change and it hasn't changed for the better. Our rights are being eroded one bit at a time. Um, our teachers have been left without any payroll. Uh, our education system has suffered. The arts have suffered. Our veterans have suffered. The economy has suffered. Healthcare has suffered, all to feed the 
Even the market will suffer, continue to suffer as it gets consolidated into fewer and fewer hands. And I think um, conservatives and liberals, uh, while many you, you would believe are polarized, um, there's a huge sector of even the Republican community that is behind uh, getting rid of Trump because everything, all of our liberties, all of our freedoms, and every single one of our voices is in jeopardy um, based on a narcissistic whim. There is no real calculated uh, vision whatsoever. If it were another Republican president, I don't think it would be, there would be so much in the balance to have Republicans turning on Republicans like they are now. Um, so there's a lot, a lot in stake, if not everything is at stake. Thank you.